This WDF then now for everything is awesome. I need to update it a little bit though. Yeah. I like how I update the intros like this. You'll see a little bit of bits and pieces. I'm glad I'm glad I'm glad you kept this intro and song and not the abomination yeah. they're using now. Yeah, I don't like that. Yeah, I don't like the, the Fox one either. It's like I kept it left. It's a bit smacked on purposely if you look at the lyrics and it's relationship to Paul. Honestly, yeah. Alright, let's see. Ladies and gentlemen, we continue our road to Return of the Beast. Ladies and gentlemen, this is Frank Nall, Joe on last night, Carter Winning, and welcome to the Brent the, the commentary broadcast group. Brandon Silver, as we are live from Denver, Colorado, as we have two championship matches for tonight. That is right, Frank Dog. Stat Carter all the way from top to bottom. But in our main event of the evening. Abyss and The Undertaker will team up to battle Sheamus and Cesaro of the bar in a rematch from a very controversial uh, rebellion when uh, The Bar won the Tag Team Championships in uh, less than uh, favorable circumstances. The following contest That's right, the Brothers of Destruction will be out for revenge tonight. The but the first match is for the Intercontinental, Intercontinental Championship. Championship. And we'll get to why Kane wasn't he isn't competing in that match later on tonight as well. And uh, ladies and gentlemen, this match is for the Intercontinental Championship. First up, Wade Barrett. And Wade Barrett's been on a hot streak ever since defeating Christian. He dethroned Rey Mysterio and then, and then one of uh, WDF NXT his own in a competitive match. That's right, an incredible uh, brawl with Cassius Arno. Uh, Cassius Arno, uh, and, and not just Cassius Arno, but a motivated Cassius Arno heading into a big time match with Minoru Suzuki at NXT TakeOver, but it just wasn't enough to put away Wade Barrett on one of the hottest runs in his WWF career thus far. The amount of momentum that Barrett has accrued over the last few weeks has been nothing short of remarkable, and if I'm John Morrison going into this match, I am extremely nervous. Oh, John Morrison, whoa! New Era Cottonville Championship. Well, uh, all of the uh, WDF championships are getting a uh, little facelift here and there. Uh, you know, we've seen uh, several championships already uh, change a little bit of uh, their look. You know, the United States Championship, uh, I believe Raw's tag team titles. You know, uh, all right. the championships are getting uh, some face but now the Intercontinental Championship. New design looking fabulous on John Morrison, but I'm willing to bet that Wade Barrett thinks it'll look even better on him. John Morrison getting ready to battle Wade Barrett for the Intercontinental Championship in the opening contest of SmackDown here tonight. And, you know, John Morrison's a fearless individual. John Morrison lives for these big-time situations. He lives for the big matches. And, you know, speaking of John Morrison and Wade Barrett, both actually had their issues with Christian, which led them to different courses in their careers. Morrison thought right. Christian was the Miz for some reason, and then Wade Barrett believed that Christian was in his way. Introducing the challenger. Connor, what do you think Wade Barrett's From chances Manchester, are in this matchup? England, weighing in at 245 pounds, Wade Barrett. Barrett has a good shot if he can get that ball hammer. That might be it. Introducing the champion. I don't want to take anything away from John From Morrison's Los offense, Angeles, but California, it's going to be hard to get back up if he gets hit with that bull hammer pounds. even once. That thing is, is a killer. WWE Intercontinental Champion, John Morrison. Well, you do bring up a good point. 
Uh, Wade Barrett, though, that ball hammer can come from out of nowhere. It's unpredictable. It's hard to read. Uh, but if John Morrison can figure out the trick, if John Morrison can figure out that, that golden ticket, that might be what he needs. That's right. I think if, if John Morrison wants to stand any chance in this match, he cannot let Barrett get on a roll. The Barrett Barrage isn't just something that Barrett says he brings. It's something he lives in the ring. If you let him get on a roll, you will swiftly regret it. Uh, oh, Wade Barrett comes charging in early in that match. Yeah, but he misses, and John Morrison tries to take advantage of Wade Barrett. And there's that Barrett Barrage that Brandon was talking about. That kind of aggression. He's a uh, Wade Barrett, a bare knuckle fighter. Wade Barrett this is very physical, very aggressive. And he kind of brings that bare knuckle boxing. Oh no! Oh! No place oh, no, the ref. We're not even one match in. We're not even a minute in. We're not even one match in. If I'm a referee, I'm asking for a pay raise after that. I haven't seen that black referee in a while. I think all referees are. I think the referees' union's gonna be on our ass. I haven't seen that other See? ref. While the referee that got tortured so much. See, this is what oh, the do. Oh, big super kick. Kick right across the jaw. I could have popped it right out of place. And it drops this is exactly, off my board. This is exactly what John Morrison needs to do. He needs to keep the offense moving. Don't let Barrett catch his breath. That's right. Morrison in control. Oh. Here's the cover. We're now one. One. Two, oh. Two, oh. You can see the look on Barrett's face. It's almost like he's saying, what are you doing? Just stay down. That's right. And oh, now, I've got now. To you, you probably followed Wade Barrett's career. You know, he was with the Renaissance. What made Wade Barrett change the course of his career, going from a tag team wrestler to a single competitor again? Oh, nice kick by Ooh. John Morrison there. Looks the leg. Cover one. Cover two. And oh, oh! And to answer your question, I think it's just a matter of when you're in a tag team, you can accomplish a lot of amazing things, but there's always that asterisk. You needed someone to watch your back to do it. And I oh. think Wade Barrett just hit a point where he said, "You know, enough's enough. I'm going to carve out my own legacy. No excuses. It's going to be all me." Oh, Northern Light Suplex. You know, Wade Barrett and Damian Sand also competed for the World Heavyweight Championship as Kurt Angle defending against. The Rock as well in the Fatal 4-Way. That's right. And, uh, oh, Morrison. Ooh. Nice Ooh. run there. Hey, Barrett was a little dizzy on his feet there. Ooh. And, Mo oh, Barrett with the whip to change. That's, good. That's it. With the leg. Two. Oh. We have a new team now. can't afford to get frustrated. If you let your guard down for even a second, Morrison will get the advantage back. That is right, and... Oh, 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 Flash kick! Oh, oh, Here's the cover one. We got a two, we got a kick out. What a match we have. To, and we're not... This is the first match of the night, fellas. We're not even halfway done with this show. And we have... Uh, absolutely! But, oh, wait, oh! Morrison had Barrett in uh, a, a not-so-advantageous position. He had him set for the, uh, oh! Oh, there with the backbreaker. Uh, and, you know, Barrett had him. Oh, Morrison had him set for the Starship Pain. Barrett was able to escape. One thing I like about Barrett is his meticulous approach to his opponents. He knows going in, he has to soften up the head so the bull hammer can reach maximum effectiveness when he goes for it. Yeah. Oh! Of course, Wade Barron has had uh, some success here in WDF, notably being the final ever East Another ECW champion. Change. That's why I believe Wade Barron defeated William Regal to become the ECCW champion. Wait! Wait a oh, minute! Wait, 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 no! I don't, I don't know what the whole thing with... Uh, I don't know what the whole thing with uh, that was. I think we should have gone for the uh, bull hammer. Wait, Morrison. Who let? Oh! Morrison hits it. 
Rock. Two. 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 Oh, they got oh, a two. God. And I have to think the referee took a little too long to get into position, and that might have saved Wade Barrett's chances. And Wade Barrett's shoving away Morrison. You had to oh. think Morrison had it right there, but the ref took way too long to get into position, and that allowed Wade Barrett to kick out at two. Well, Wade Barrett looking for that bull hammer again. No missing. Oh, oh Morrison! Oh. Very impressive. Almost like a Pele kick. Well, Morrison, remember, used that, feud, used that in his feud with AJ Styles. Oh, wait, Morrison has out there. Oh, wait, wait, wait. No! Pain. Pain. One, two, got him! What a match! And it was that one, it was that one big move that allowed John Morrison to retain the Intercontinental Championship, the newly designed Intercontinental Championship. Very nice stuff by John Morrison. Morrison continues perhaps his reascension to the top of the WDF ladder. Wait, that Barry, is right, very impressive. Wait, 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 wait. Oh, what did he want? The former Intercontinental Champion, Zack Ryder. Zack Ryder wants, uh, it seems like he uh, wants to confront the man holding the belt. And remember, Zack Ryder actually defeated Curtis Axel in the past United. You, we were questioning what was going through Ryder's mind. I guess what is going through his mind is, I want that belt back. As anybody would. Strange time to come out now, though, what do you think? I mean, I don't think he does. Zack Ryder, I, I think he just wants to send the message loud and clear to John Morrison that he wants the belt back. It's called Morrison in the ring. Zack Ryder. What's the crowd? the crowd? Oh! And yep, you knew that was coming! Next week, though. Next week on SmackDown. Ho oh, ho! And Morrison accepts. Wow! Oh. It's I guess it's official. For next week on SmackDown, John Morrison versus Zack Ryder for the Intercontinental Championship. What a bombshell! Well, Morrison may have gotten away from Barrett tonight, but where, but do you think Zack Ryder can really reclaim it now? It may be. You know, you never know. Oh, man. I do kind of question think... why Ryder wanted it next week. You would have thought, you would think in theory he'd want it at, at uh, Return of the Beast. Uh, what's this now? Shawn Michaels just arrived in the building. Of, oh, it's Jill Manager. Oh. Sean Michaels Whoa. obviously still. Uh, Sean Michaels is looking for Bishop. <laughs> well, after what happened at uh, after what happened at Rebellion, I don't blame Sean Michaels. No, yeah, but Joshua Bishop is not in the building. As he probably shouldn't be. Would you want to be around Michaels right now? Michael's calling out a, a, a bit of a what he sees as a hypocrisy by CM Punk. Now hold on a minute. Shawn Michaels doesn't. Punk is right. Shawn Michaels doesn't understand the position that Punk is in. He can he can't let those two just rip apart the arena with the board of directors breathing down his neck. Well, CM Punk put himself in this mess in the first place. Oh. Shawn Michaels giving <coughs> two options. It seems these two have been able to reach an agreement. Or at least Shawn what Michaels. Michaels considers an agreement. 
Shawn Michaels is one of the best to ever do it. I take nothing away from that. But threatening to kick your boss's teeth down his throat probably isn't the way to ingratiate well, I mean, yourself. Let's right see what CM Punk did to Bret Hart. Fair enough. Yeah, and obviously, uh, you know, uh, very uh, tense dynamic <laughs> between. Obviously, a tense dynamic between Shawn Michaels and Bret Hart. Well, here comes uh, Tyson Kidd in the ring now. Tyson Kidd's set to take on uh, uh, Malik Brown in a match here tonight. You know, last time on SmackDown, I believe it was Tyler Breeze in action. Well, yeah, well, uh, these guys, uh, despite I, what JoJo calls them, I believe they're known as Redemption. So Tyler Breeze actually defeated Neville thanks to distraction from Kidd. And then Malik Brown actually ran the two off, and Malik Brown actually called Joshua Bishop out. Yeah, there, there's a lot of moving parts of the whole Joshua Bishop saga. There's the moving part of, uh, you know, the uh, long dynamic between Malik Brown and Tyson Kidd and Tyler Brace that dates back to, uh, you know, that dates back to NXT Season 1. There's the whole situation with Shawn Michaels and Joshua Bishop. Malik Brown and Joshua Bishop. There's a lot of different moving parts to all of this. Joshua you Bishop, Shawn Michaels. I mean, it dates back to when Joshua Bishop was being called out by Shawn Michaels by his reckless behavior when Bishop was trying to fight in the field and Roman Reigns and now both to Del Rio. Bishop was this warned by Shawn Michaels not to take the wrong path like Michaels did. And Bishop made it look like that Shawn Michaels was being the one who was selfish. Yeah. You see that ringside. Look who's in the corner, Molly Brown. It's the WDF yeah. Cruiserweight Champion. That is right, that Adrian Neville. Neville coming out to probably keep the odds as even as possible with redemption out here. This whole situation with Bishop, Michaels, Redemption, and Brown, it, it's a powder keg ready to blow, guys. When it does, SmackDown is going to be a war zone. That is, I, I do agree with that one. Starting WEDF NXT when Breeze and Kid were the considered themselves the gatekeepers of NXT and they felt disrespected when people like Malik Brown and Finn Balor came in and debuted and overran them and, and took their spots. Yeah, not, I there, not too unsimilar to uh, Baron Corbin and Elias. And I don't necessarily disagree with that notion. If you were there and you had put in all this work and then this new flavor of the month come in, you wouldn't be frustrated? And then you know, be bring up a good point. The, I'd, be, I'd be frustrated about the way like uh, Tyler, Tyler, Tyler Breeze and Tyson Kidd did it. Sure, they are upset, but the way they've handled it is not the right way of handling it. Yeah, they have a, could, they have a decent motive. They have you know a, 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 a good cause. They call but being, I do don't, certainly don't agree with the actions and the way they did it. It's called being petty and spiteful, acting like a little kid over this. But, you know, know they, they might have struck gold, I will admit. They might have struck gold with this alliance with Joshua Bishop. What? You know, Joshua. Joshua Bishop, a, a very tough, one of the toughest guys in WBDF. Certainly one of the biggest. And as Bishop explained, he believed that Kid and Breeze were considered castoffs, and he gave them an opportunity like the McMahons did. Uh, Joshua yeah, Bishop, one of the uh, kind of front runners of the first season of NXT. You know, he was kind of one of those guys in that kind of position, that kind of managerial position. But he was always balancing between that managerial well, the spot. The way Bishop and is considered, he believes his ego, and he believes he thinks he knows what's right for business instead of listening to someone like Shawn Michaels, who's been there and done that. Bishop is taking, is being hard headed. He's taken down the wrong path. I tried to speak to him today and he had no word for me. He, he said, you don't know what you're talking about. This is not Shawn the same Joshua Bishop. You know what? Shawn Michaels may have experience in the business, but he's also a, a I don't know, I don't want to say a relic, but he has a relic's mindset. 
He doesn't know what bishop, where bishop is coming from. Not really. How could he? Bishop believes he's the main attraction. He's tired of people like Brock Lesnar, the Shield, Del Rio being in his way. And the way Bishop acted towards Samoa Joe, trying to gain that WDF championship at all costs, that was a path of destruction that Bishop set himself up for. Oh, oh nicely blocked by Malik Brown! Oh! oh. The leader Very of the nicely party. Nicely by Malik Brown. Malik Brown fired up here tonight. You gotta believe he's about at his wits end with redemption and their antics. He's been at his wits end. All he wants is to get his hands on Joshua Bishop, but so does uh, Shawn Michaels. And remember, Malik Brown and Shawn Michaels actually teamed up at Rebellion to face Kaden Breeze, and we saw Joshua Bishop intervene. And, and that was when Joshua house. Bishop when this whole redemption group. I, I have been told by uh, one of these three that it is called redemption. I, I tried speaking with Kid and Breeze, uh, and they said something about redemption. This is not retribution. No. Uh, we can all be thankful for that much. Oh! Happens. Well, they believe they deserve retribution. Yeah, they, they, want, they want the fame, they want the glory, they want the spotlight! To themselves and kid going after the uh, knee and you know all of these guys are, are so talented in their own right but it's just almost a shame to see what low lengths they'll go to in order to get that success to and all you know Connor I don't really agree with that you you call it a shame I think what they're displaying is what you need to have in this business you need to have an unbridled aggression and an urgency about you to get to the top because no one cares if you no one cares about you until you do not really oh it's nice and kid oh hang on Malik Brown oh man well Malik Innovative. Brown has it gone to the length of oh the, oh <laughs> Malik Brown showing up that little bit of arrogance to him he has that thigh to him now Malik Brown with the side oh! of him. a broken Matt Hardy. Yeah, that was like some elevated side effect. Maybe uh, I saw a little bit of Booker T in there. Or the kid talking to Tyson Kidd. Tyson Kidd. Uh, shout out to, uh, oh, one of the most influential African-American wrestlers of all time, Booker T. One, two, two. Eight. And uh, you know, Tyson Kidd, uh, obviously part of, uh, uh, by marriage, he is uh, heavily tied to uh, the legendary Hart family. Of course, married to Natalia, who is directly a part of the family. Oh! Tyson oh. Kidd told me that Excellent. him being with Joshua Bishop has nothing to do with Bret Hart. He says that Joshua Bishop might disrespect Bret Hart, but Kidd says he's in it for himself. He says he started being looked over by his own family. Yeah, I mean, yeah, and, you know, uh, there's you know, the Hart family, you know, very large, a very large, very legendary family. Of course, the most well-known of the two are uh, brothers Brett and Owen, but there's also, you know, Davy Boy Smith, Davy Boy Smith Jr., and Stu Natalia, Hart. Tyson Kidd. Stu Hart. Stu Hart, of course. And, you know, Tyson and Kidd, oh my God, oh God! Oh my oh. God! Malik Brown is laying in the here. Kids, you better put your hands up. And I guess that's that boy, that boy, that boy, going, that boy, going to sleep. That boy, going to that sleep. Call a violent party. That, 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 was, that boy, going to sleep. You know, Connor, is it any surprise then that Tyson Kidd has? Wait, one, two, pick out. Is it any surprise that Tyson Kidd developed this giant chip on his shoulder? When you've got the Hart family attached to you, whether by blood or not, marriage or not. Yeah, I, I don't I don't think it's that unreasonable for him to have this chip on his shoulder. Wait a minute. Oh! Well shout out to his boyfriend Balor! Oh! Oh! 
Code Blue hook the leg two, two. and all oh, only a two. I believe Tyson Gibbs it's always wrestled with a chip on his shoulder. He's always wrestled with something to prove because he wants to stand out even amongst the legendary Hart family. And Tyson Kidd's wife and Natalia will be in action tonight as well against the women's champion Sasha Banks. Yeah, and do you think there's any kind of connection between... What, what do you think must be going for Natalia's mom with the whole... Uh, you know, with the whole uh, thing with Tyler Breeze and... Joshua Bishop. Well, How do you think this is affecting that kind of dynamic with uh, Tyson Kidd and Natalia? <laughs> if I'm Natalia in those shoes, I, I'd be doing whatever my husband. That's my husband's point of view. She probably, she's probably backing Tyson Kidd the whole time. Yeah, but... Oh! 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 oh. oh. I'm not sure oh, what my Rick Brown... Rick Brown! I'm not sure what the hell that was. It might have been a variation of the Gator Lock. He has a lot of those. That was that, that was very much like a Cobra, like a Cobra Clutch. Tyson Kidd just had to tap. I was I was surprised how how quick that was. I was caught off guard. Well, even Malik for someone has, trained, Malik Brown by has, heart. Malik Brown has so many moves in his arsenal. I don't think Tyson Kidd was expecting that. I don't think so either. Guard. I think that might have caught Tyson Kidd a little off guard. I mean, he's known for the Jaguar knee, and here's the Brothers of Destruction, the third brother of Abyss. And if I know anything about these two, they have been absolutely fuming about not only losing their titles to the Barb, but what happened to Kane. That's right. Uh, and, and, you know, not only that, but also losing the titles as controversially as they did. Remember the bar. Uh, Brothers of Destruction, Kane and Undertaker actually won those titles off. The Sheik Heel. That's right. You know, CM Punk is actually kind of responsible for uh, the Shield and the Brothers of Destruction's war. Remember, uh, at uh, I think flashing back before CM Punk's match with Lashley, Bret Hart brought out Kane to try to deal with being the enforcer. Ben Balor, of course, talking about his losing effort at Rebellion. evil inside of him. Oh. Oh. Uh oh. I think Randy Orton may have wo may have woken the demon, fellas. Oh, we take a shot at CM Punk too. Yeah, obviously yeah, those two have a lot of history. It was Balor who failed to beat CM Punk at Night of Champions. But remember Balor came to the Balor came to the aid of Samoa Joe after Samoa Joe's match at the same pay-per-view. I don't know if taking a shot at CM Punk in the mood Punk has been in is a very good idea for Ben Well, remember, Ballard. CM Punk was the one that brought Brandy Orton and Edge and took care of the job for him. Well, speaking of men tied to Randy Orton, it's as Ben Balor said, his, here is his, there's Orton's mentor and fella. You know what time it is! It's time to play the game. The following contest is scheduled for one fall. Making his way to the ring from Greenwich, Connecticut. Weighing in at 255 pounds. The game, Triple A! And this man is known for evolution. This is the one man of the most dangerous men in WEDF. Despite his lack of championship success here in this company, Triple H is still one of the most dangerous men to have ever laced a pair of boots because Triple H is a master at mind games, getting into your head, exploiting your weaknesses against you. There is a reason this man is called the Cerebral Assassin. And we saw the way he turned on Bobby Lashley last season. He tried to manipulate Bobby Lashley to join in him. The way he broke Big Show's hand. 
I mean, this man is very dangerous. That's why he's a cerebral assassin. And you know him and Ric Flair, the way Ric Flair set up Bobby Lashley? I'm surprised Ric Flair's not here tonight being in Triple H's corner. And even then, Triple H, I think he, he might believe he has Finn Balor's number. He has something uh, to exploit with Finn Balor. But this is a different Finn Balor. It, it, there's an evil inside him. It might be what uh, Brandon said. It, it, an inner demon awoken inside of the very mortal soul of Finn Balor. And the way he mentioned CM Punk. You gotta believe this feud between CM Punk and Finn Balor is far from over. CM Punk just distracted by the He has a vendetta. Finn Balor is out for blood. When the demon smells blood, he will, he is one of the most dangerous individuals in WEDF. And it's like it's like a supernatural effect. It's like a vampire and supernatural just going after someone when they scent blood. That's right, but uh, and they're doesn't I'll, I'll seem to be you, unleashing the demon tonight. I'll tell you that what, no, there's not gonna be no demon or Sam Winchester going after Finn Balor when Finn Balor channels in that inner demon. <laughs> well, I mean, Randy Orton's hoping to go full on Winchester with this man and his opponent. <laughs> well, we saw what happened last time on SmackDown. Finn Balor and Bobby Lashley were laid out by Triple H and Randy Orton. That has to be eating in the back of Finn Balor's mind. Is Randy Orton going to stick his nose into this match? You have to think he does. You have to think he will. Because Randy Orton, you know, he's a snake in the grass. And you don't know where a snake in the grass is. But you know that snake is waiting for the right moment to strike. And of course, he uh, very much was mentored by Triple H when uh, Triple H formed the first incarnation of Evolution alongside Ric Flair and Batista. And, and that man, Randy Orton, kind of the breakout star that he that he is, the star to you know it, it elevated Randy Orton's career to heights uh, not that he pop couldn't possibly fathom. And I think Orton still feels as if no matter what he does to Triple H, he owes Triple H for making him who he is today. I mean, they, Triple H and Randy Orton thought through blood and hell, made it personal between the families. And now these two, like, it's just like... They, they, uh, they're, Orton's done they're some like, sadistic like, things they're like Triple H. The they're one and the same. They have the same mindset. Yeah, both these men. He, he, I think Orton does get that kind of sadistic nature from Triple H. Same thing with Batista. The way Batista aligned himself with the corporate authority last season. Oh, look at this. No respect right out of the gate. You know, Triple H is actually one of the men that was actually responsible for persuading Shane and Mr. McMahon to bring Finn Balor into WEDF. And, oh, well, uh, and, and that is an interesting scenario for both these guys to be in. Oh, I mean, Connor, you gotta admit, no one that no one says this, but Triple H actually has some influence on NXT. Yeah, I, you know, he isn't. You know, uh, from my own experiences, Triple H hasn't been, you know, you know, uh, as active. Uh, some of the other people in the in the office, but he definitely has some say. Uh, like you know, he you know Triple H is always on the lookout for new talent to bring in. You know, there's been a couple people on the current NXT roster right now that uh, Triple H has kind of had a hand in. You know, kind of bringing in. You know, the likes of Andrade Cien Almas. You know, the likes of uh, no, uh, you know, you know Andrade Cien Almas, Shinsuke Nakamura. The member of the DIY, he's kind of had his uh, hand uh, in Rude. that to bring them in. Bobby Roode. Bobby Roode, uh, EC3, a couple of different people. Oh, a couple of different people that uh, Triple H has brought into WEDF. And, you know, Finn Balor, I, I would say he's kind of one of the first to kind of, that Triple H kind of brought in. And it's interesting because... 
You know, obviously Finn Balor, very famous for uh, founding the Bullet Club. He, and a lot of people said that the Bullet Club kind of have their inspiration, kind of have some roots from uh, Triple H's faction, D-Generation X. That's right. These as two, well as the New World these Order. Two. Oh, as well as the New World Order, that's right. And you and, know, those, these two kind of have a lot of similarities. Even Evolution. And Chip, Triple H is, uh, oh, uh, Triple H. I, I gotta say, I, I know Finn Balor is fired up and he really wants to prove a point here tonight, but if, if I'm him, I'm not trying to outcrawl the game. That's not, that, that's a that's a chance you just cannot take. Well, so Triple H very physical. I think Balor should try to out-wrestle Triple H. And, oh! Big job. Do stuff like that, use the speed. Oh, Triple he H. He goes for as technically sound as Triple H is. He became more of a brawler over the course of his long career. Oh, out of the Rock and, Sh and Stone Cold Steve Austin and Mankind and Undertaker all pushing you to that limit. I mean, Triple H. Oh, look at Finn Balor. Oh. And, you know, a lot Triple of those guys are brawlers as well. You know, like, uh, uh, you know, uh, you know, Taker, Austin, McFoley's kind of a, a warrior. You know, The Rock. And, oh! Oh! He led straight to both and Balor up, but Balor said, no way! Big time. He's going to try and outmaneuver Triple H. That's a smart thing to do. This is what Finn Balor needs to keep doing. Hmm. Don't play Triple H's game. Make your own. And it doesn't... It doesn't hurt any either that Triple H is why Stephanie McMahon is the brother of Shane McMahon. Is, is the sister, you mean? Yeah. <laughs> but yeah, you, uh, jokes aside, you do bring up a good point. You know, Triple H uh, obviously married into that kind of McMahon family. You know, has a lot of influence, a lot of pull. And, oh, oh. Ben Balor. Oh, quickness coming into play. Oh! Ben Balor with a springboard drop kick, hooks the leg, referee slides into position, one, one two. two, oh. Triple H may not have had that much success title-wise here in WEDF, but he's still been in some of the harshest fights you've ever seen. Well, Triple That's H is right, Triple H, a, a, a pioneer of Hell in a Cell. Well, Triple H is also a multiple-time tag team champion as well in WEDF with Shawn Michaels. That's right. Their, ro their wars with Cody Rhodes and Ted DiBiase over the years. The, the, the war with Jericho. I mean, Jericho, one of the best tag team rivalries in recent memory. Ooh. Hang on, cover here. One. One. Two. two. Oh. The fact that Shawn Michaels and Triple H went to the war with the Hardy, where Jeff Hardy almost killed himself at Bragging Rights a few years, many years ago. That's right, and uh, Triple H. Oh. Uh, hang on. Oh. Oh, Balor again trying to out wrestle, out maneuver. Oh, well, Triple H also out maneuver. Uh, Triple H. Triple H is also still in the game. He's had history against smaller opponents, beating them, even the likes of Rey Mysterio recently. And Balor with the chop, and now a chop hit to the side of the head. Hook the leg. The leg. Ew. Oh, Dude. oh! Referee, Balor let it go. I didn't realize that, that should have been a rope work. I think Ben Balor wanted to take the honorable road route here. And, you know, the referee didn't see Triple H's hand with the rope. I think he should have just taken that pin. I think that, it would have been a better idea to take that, to just take that pin. That could seriously come back to haunt him. If you have a chance to get a win over the game, you do not pass it up. And you do not make mistakes against Triple H because Triple H will find a mistake and he will take advantage of it. Uh, I don't think that was a mistake though. I think that was a him. Uh, that was deliberate. But whether that was the right move to make or not, I, I, I think that'll depend on how this match turns out. It certainly was a deliberate action, but I have to question the logic of playing honorable with Triple H at this point. Yeah, Triple H. It was like the least honorable guy you could go up against. And this is the same man that Petty Reed brought wrestling with a sledgehammer at WrestleMania 2. Hey, wait, cover one. Uh, one. 
Two. Go. Fowler. Oh, oh. Triple H caught him. I think he was going for another drop kick there. Oh. Then Balor is starting to get a little out on his feet here. Ah, uh, Balor. Not in a good spot here. He's been taking the beating. Ooh! Neck break. Taking beating, a beating from Triple H. And, and I think it's coming back to haunt him. And it's fine, Buster! Fine. That. Triple H hooks the lead. One. Two. Two. Oh. Finn Balor is nothing if not resilient. We know that much. Triple H a little upset with the referee here. And, that, and that's come back to bite a couple people in the ass. I don't think we should be so focusing on what he has to do. And that one! Roll it! One, two! two. Oh. We saw it happen to Duke Ammons twice. Well, it happened to a couple of people. You know, when you're too busy uh, arguing with the referee, you know, you're oh. like, it was showing why he's a cerebral assassin with the Golden Pedigree. Wait, 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 Bobby Lashley! Lashley out of nowhere! No, what? Against Randy Orton! Bobby Lashley says, no, we, we're not letting this happen. And where, where, where is he taking him? I have no idea. He's taking him to the ringside area! Oh dear. I think I know what's about to happen. Uh oh, oh no. Oh no. Oh, Don't do it. Oh no, no. A steal oh, through the. God. He might have broken Randy Orton in half. He might have broken himself. I don't think there's any way to do it, Frank. We need some medics out here. Oh, there's a match in the ring. There's still a match in the ring. Ben Bauer. Wait a minute. Bello! Oh. Could this be a huge upset for Finn Bauer if he can knock off the game? Bauer setting up for him. Could it! No! Could it grow? No one home! Roll out of the way. And look at him. That is Thanks. He's taking a breather here. I think Turbo's trying to get himself. Oh no! Oh no! Lashley! Triple H doesn't know where to go. Oh, ho, whoa! Lashley! Getting Triple H back in the ring! Fowler! Hook the arm! Put it that I think that's the 1916. One, two, three. Stop it. What are you? You know what? Take nothing away from Ten Ballard, but you got to give a man of size assist to Bobby Lashley on that one. Now, how do you explain it? Oh, he's coming in. Well, oh, he's coming in. He's ready to uh, fight back. He's ready to fight. Tim Baller gets a little retribution for last week. Big victory here for the leader of the Baller Club. That's right, Tim Baller with the two feet. Not just for himself, but for the audience. Watching we need some medics out here for Randy Orton. I don't think he's moved. Yeah, Randy Orton. Our truth backstage with them with Dolph Ziggler. Oh. Oh. 
claims to claim. Well, R-Truth isn't exactly the best grammar-wise. Well, didn't Samoa Joe and Dolph Ziggler defeat R-Truth and Monster when last saw on SmackDown? I'm barely sure they did. Come on, Samoa Joe, fat boy. Yeah, so respectful. Oh, well, Dolph Ziggler wants our truth to put his money where his mouth is. <laughs> oh, yep. I would pay good money to see our truth walk up to Samoa Joe and say that to his face. I'll, I would too. Him. Just walk up to him. Say that in front of his face. Come on, our truth. Sounds like our truth has a death wish if you ask me. Well, it looks like it's for... except for United. R-Truth taking on Dolph Ziggler on WDF United. Mr. Money in the Bank versus the number one contender for the WDF Championship for Summerfest. Well, Frank, I can't stop you, so might as well go on. You know what time it is, Connor. It's boss time, and the WD Women Championship also had a face there. All of the belts are going to get a face left. Sasha Banks coming out to the arena, getting ready for some action. Our design, our design crew is here at WEDF and we're are doing fine work. Time, you know, so many talented women coming into WEDF. You know, Sasha Banks. Uh, Sasha Banks, uh, Becky Lynch, Bailey, Charlotte Flair, Paige, Alexa Bliss. Right, Charlotte and Becky could sell their differences on WEDF Raw, and I'm breaking this right now. Charlotte and Becky Lynch will be competing on WEDF Raw in a Falls Count Anywhere match with the winner facing Sasha Banks at In Your House. That is oh, a massive that match. Is big. That is big. That, that is big, big news. And uh, Sasha Banks is going to be watching that carefully. But before we get to Raw, she has to go through Natalia. You know, ordinarily, if you're Sasha Banks, who, do you, who, who would you rather face? But... Charlotte and Becky can either way, Sasha's in for a fight. Sasha says it doesn't matter. Sasha says bring everyone on. She's a fighting champ. And you know, that's just kind of the kind of honor that Sasha Banks has. That's kind of the fighting spirit that Sasha Banks brings to the table. This is Sasha Banks' first match competing since uh, WEDF Rebellion, where she defended the Women's Championship against Nikki Bella. And you know, Rebellion wasn't too long ago. That was in the last, what, like, a week ago? Well, that wasn't too, uh, too long ago. And, and, if, and if you're in the tie, you, you got to think, getting a win over the women's champion here, even, if, even though she's not in line for a shot now, it'll go a long way to getting her there. Yeah. Oh! Oh, Sasha Banks missed the, uh... Roundhouse on a couple occasions. Natalia caught her. But Sasha Banks shoves Natalia away. Drop kick. No. Misses the mark. And this time the drop kick connects. And Natalia very technical. She's also a part of that Heart Dungeon. Heart Dynasty. That's right. You know, one of the uh, very talented individuals. Both of these women are. Well, WWE Sasha Banks actually oh. her style to another legend in this business, Eddie Guerrero. That's right. Uh, in the Women's Championship Tournament, Natalia defeated, uh, I believe, Alicia Fox and Becky Lynch to get to, I believe it was the uh, semifinals, if I'm not mistaken. And Sasha Banks was the one to put her down. You know, we brought it up earlier. Redemption was out here. Do you think all this stuff with Tyson Kidd and Tyler Breeze is weighing on Natalia at all? 
It might be, but I also think that Natalia is able to kind of separate those two thoughts and, and you know, maybe in, on a backsta backstage, in, 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 in a preparation level, it might kind of throw her off a little bit, but Natalia is a woman oh, that this, very much is self-focused. Oh my the, lord! Oh my look at lord! The strength. She is bench pressing the women's champion! Sasha Banks had a hell of a she tournament. One, she though. won the whole thing. She beat Mickey James. Uh, she beat Naomi. She beat Natalia. And then she beat Lita uh, on her path to become the new WWF Women's Champion. And I believe the first WWF Women's Champion since 2009. Oh, better instincts of. Uh... Natalia! Oh! Oh! Maddie by nature on the outside. Natalia. Seems, uh... Natalia. Has her up. Alabama! Bama! There's a cover now, Wally. Down there. Two. Two. Oh. You know, you talk about the positives that Natalia can gain by pinning Sasha. Imagine what that does to Sasha's confidence going into a big title defense if she loses to Natalia here. Miss Nuka Driver, if Sasha loses to Natalia, that opens Natalia for a future women's championship opportunity. Well, if Natalia comes up after Becky Lynch and Charlotte Flair do battle and says, you know what, I did be the women's champion. I deserve to be in that match as well. Yeah, it could be very problematic for Sasha Banks just from a, a pure standpoint of Okay, then I would have to face two people instead of one. And God forbid some weird draw happens. Because I don't think Sasha Banks wants to both lose to Natalia and Charlotte and Becky to have some sort of draw that would result in a fatal format. I think Sasha Banks wants to keep it one-on-one. -on -one. Two. Two. And, oh. Banks says she is a fighting champion, though. Yeah, but just because you're a fighting champion doesn't... Oh! Oh, oh no! Oh, no, no, no! I've seen this before! I've seen oh, this before! Two. Oh. I've seen that tactic before! I don't know how in the world Banks picked out of that. That's exactly what Adam Cole did in the NXT Championship Gold Rush against Cash Soto. But it seems it didn't have the same effect with Sasha Banks this time. German suplex by Natalia. Natalia has been in control of this match for a bit now. Wait, hip up. And Sasha Banks made a comeback. Getting back into things. And no, Natalia. Oh. Back and forth, these two ladies go. Sasha gonna try it again. Back up this time, connect. Here's a cover oh, one. Two. 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 Oh. Also, Sasha trying to put her whole body weight on Natalia, trying to make sure Natalia didn't kick out of that. Yeah, Natalia she's trying to put her whole body media. weight on the shoulders. Another German suplex. On the neck and upper body. Oh, wait a minute. Oh, 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 the counter. Sasha oh, oh, oh. turns into a bank statement. There's nowhere to go. Nowhere to go. Out of nowhere. What's Natalia going to do? How much fight does Natalia have got. left? She's fighting with everything she's got, but she's, there's nowhere for her to break the hold. She can't get to the ropes. It's Natalia! Natalia might be forced to tap! Natalia! And she taps! No choice! There was no choice. Natalia is... was forced to tap, and the women's champion once again picks up another victory. Here is your winner, Sasha Banks! A, st a statement made to her challengers. That makes her, uh... I don't want I believe. That's a bank's proving why she is a woman, a fighting champion. But the question is, who will be facing the ball?
and in your house. Will it be Charlotte Flair? Will it be Becky Lynch? We will find out on WED Raw in a fall count anywhere match. The road in your house it gets more and more chaotic. Oh, they all fired up. I hope for their sake they are. Come on. Those are some mighty big words from the bar. Somehow I don't think it's going to be as easy if they make it seem. They make it seem inevitable. You know you have a bit in the mix thanks to the... I don't know who attacked uh, Kane last time on SmackDown. Oh... One thing's for certain, fellas, it's about that time. The main event. Is, that is right. Uh, next up, Abyss Undertaker versus Cesaro and Sheamus. Brothers of Destruction, you just know they've been chomping at the bit, ready, waiting to get their hands on the bar. That is right. And we know that having Abyss in the mix now, Abyss can take a nightmarish amount of punishment. That's right, but so too can these men. And speaking of championships gaining a new facelift, look at the new WEDF Tag Team Championships. Those are some very pretty belts. The tag team scene here in WEDF, now those new belts are going to be more prized than ever. Well, you know That's right, because there's a lot of great tag teams here on SmackDown. Brothers of Destruction, The Shield, The New Day, Dudley Boys, The Bar, Lucha Dragons. Redemption. Redemption. And you know, there's a, there's a team that's been chasing the bar for a while. That's the New Day. The New Day right. were actually taken out of that number one contenders match, which the Dudley's actually took place because the bar attacked the New Day. The bar wants nothing to do with New Day. Now the bar have uh, not wanted any bit of the New Day. Although I'm not sure they've traded in the New Day for anything better. There's, there are a few things scarier here in WEDF than a pissed off monster. And, they, and they've got their hands on they, They're going to get their hands on two of them starting now. Here we go. Connor, I, I don't know how the bar could even hope to stop these two in a fair fight. You feel the atmosphere. This, Brandon, is like an electric horror far beyond mortal comprehension. But you can feel the dark energy emanating from these two. A, a chill from the arena of their very presence. This is what the bar is going to have to overcome. And this is a whole different entity here. You're bringing the monster missing to the bowl. That's right. Well, the monster abyss has had his battles over the years too with Kane and the Undertaker. He's become WED of champion. He was undefeated for many years. I'm not sure Cesaro Seamus know what they're getting themselves into. I mean, I mean, it took Undertaker to take this man abyss. 
this monster thrown through hell in the cell. Not many people put the best down. Undertaker's one of the few. Braun Strowman, they took the... Uh, Abyss had to break the ring to take it out Braun Strowman, I know. Roman Reigns actually put Abyss down, I believe, in the King of the Ring tournament. Abyss toppled what many thought was to be the unstoppable Goldberg to win the World Heavyweight Championship at one point in a massive oh! war. There's no doubt about that. And then uh, it took it took mind games from the Undertaker for a bit to lose that in a triple threat involving Goldberg and Dolph Ziggler. And Frank, I'm just gonna repeat the same thing to you. How in the world are the Bar gonna get out of this one with the titles? I don't know, but I mean, it's, it's very difficult. It's a big ass. The bar are in a very tough predicament because this is a different Brothers of Destruction than they battled at Rebellion. The bar with the new tag team championships, that is what they're fighting to preserve. The bar may be about to get a lesson, man. Don't write checks that you can't cash. And man, I mean, why Kane is not here tonight. He was attacked by someone backstage after he tried to confront CM Punk demanding a rematch against the bar for the Brothers of Destruction. And who do you think had anything to do with Kane being attacked? Uh, I yeah. don't know. It, it, there could be any number of uh, things. Yeah. But, you know, CM Punk, yeah. I, I want to point your attention to CM Punk's reaction. CM Punk almost immediately rubbed it in the face of Kane. So, uh, 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 something just tells me that Punk has to be the mastermind behind it. You know, no, come on. Punk, you, don't, you don't know that. CM Punk, you know, uh, he, he released the Hound of Justice, the shield against the Brothers of Destruction when Undertaker called him out on, on the Bobby Lashley aftermath, the attacking of Kane many months ago. Yeah, but it's Punk, just a reaction of Oh, well, Punk. this tagged in. Oh, the Punk just in. But Punk, the fact that Punk just instantly rubs it in the face of Kane, wastes no time in saying no, wastes no time in calling him the big red loser, it, it just, it, it all is too fishy to me. He's acting a little sus, not gonna lie. You know, I am so know, sorry those know, words came Punk, out of my mouth. Punk, you know, Punk also turned the lights off on Bret Hart on an episode of SmackDown, and then the shield were found behind the assault. So it's very possible that this could take, trace back to uh, the Shield. He knows. They, they say that CM Punk and the Shield. Oh, but this not even this. Oh no! I don't think Abyss even registers it. Oh no! Oh no! We got one. Sheamus might have made a big mistake there. Could CM Punk be? You know, the, the, the rumor is that CM Punk's not dealing with the Shield anymore. How do we know that's true? Oh, Cesaro tagged in. Cesaro tags himself in. I mean, you I don't have to all... agree. You don't have to agree with the way the man runs SmackDown. But one thing I think we can all agree on, he's not exactly subtle when he makes a big move. If he was still working with the Shield, surely we would have seen it by now. You don't know about CM Punk, though. He'll say he's yeah, CM Punk is almost way too calculated. He knows. The thing about CM Punk is that he knows he's not subtle. So he would be subtle to throw people off the scent. Especially in the situation that he's in right now. I don't know. Well, about the whole thing with Kane and, and Punk's reaction to it just makes me very suspicious. If Punk didn't act the way he did, I wouldn't be thinking about CM Punk being the, the, the guy behind it, but because he immediately rubbed it in the face of, the, of Kane, it just makes me feel like he's behind it. He is, has to be the mastermind. Well, you got to think, CM Punk is on a shorter leash than ever at this time. He, This is the same... Well, Desperate Man does desperate measures to keep his job, to That's win the true. title. But this oh! Is oh! Oh! Well, take a going old school. 
I know we still have a match to, to discuss, but about the whole punk thing, it's just I, I don't know. I feel like he has some role to play in this because of that reaction. Well, one thing's for sure, nothing stays secret around here for long. If he is doing it, we'll find out soon. That is for sure. And Undertaker, oh! Out. Undertaker oh. was waiting on Sheamus to see if Sheamus would make his move. But, uh, you Sheamus know, you know, you know this. You know the Shield aren't going to take too lightly to losing twice in a row to Kane and the Undertaker either. Oh, absolutely not. And, uh, hang on. Oh! Oh, well, I'm there. You know what they say about a cornered animal. You know, this has actually been a slower paced match than the one at Rebellion. Oh, wait a minute, Cesaro, don't tell me he's going to do this. Oh, my God! Oh my he's God. swinging the Undertaker! Jesus Christ! What a remarkable feat, even strength Ooh. in the Cesaro. Who has the guts to swing the Undertaker? Cesaro does! That's who! They don't call him the Swiss Superman for no reason. Big boot. Undertakers, what's he thinking? Oh, Seamus trying to fight against Undertaker. Trying to take a fight against the Pirates, the best striker in the game. I don't think you want to go toe-to-toe -to -toe with Undertaker. Oh, no, you do not want to get into a physical fight with the Undertaker. Oh! It's all set. It's all Oh my God! Big power slam. That was a choke slam power bomb. What the hell are you talking about? That was strength and power. One, two. Oh, Taker raises the shoulder up. If getting into a fist fight with Triple H is a bad idea, trying to outbox the Undertaker is a death wish. That's for oh, sure. Man. What a knee. Yeah, a right across the, almost the skull. You see Abyss is, Abyss is trying to get in the ring, but the bar are doing strategic tags in wrestling. They are isolating the Undertaker. This is exactly what they need to do. If Abyss is key strength, if his pain and tolerance. If they let him get in the match and get rolling, they might not get this match back under control. That is for sure. Oh, look at the Undertaker. Look at the right and left. Oh. Cesaro. Cesaro wants no part of that. Wait. Well, Cesaro wants all the part of it. Cesaro wants every bit of this. That was not Wanted smart. to come That's in and Cesaro. save Sheamus from the beating. But that model just opened the door for the end of the match. And here comes the monster, the man impervious to pain. Ooh. I remember it took like almost 16 German suplexes for Brock Lesnar to beat Abyss. Oh, 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 oh my God. God. Oh, he's got to oh. move. Oh, oh no. And choke slam by this. Two and no. Well, Shane is kicked out, but you got to think that choke slam can very well be the beginning of the end. That might be the bar on uh, nearing. They've got to be nearing oh. their last legs. Oh no! Oh, finally the bitch goes down. They're trying to isolate Abyss. Yeah, and it was, uh, oh, oh, what, what the hell? Oh, what is this? this? Oh, Lord! Shane, are on top of Sheamus' shoulders! Oh, my God! Good Lord! One, One two, two! Oh, my God! That's not something you see every day. Yeah, desperate times call for desperate measures. Fight like this, you you will try anything, even things outside of your wheelhouse, to try to keep your opponent down. 
This is our no for the concussion blowing uppercut. Oh, a bitch with an uppercut of his own. Oh my god, these two throwing uppercut after uppercut. And oh no! Oh what? Oh my I'm, I'm speechless. <laughs> An uppercut to the neck. I have never oh seen a fist launch that far. <laughs> no, 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 oh, no, no. Not to a fist two. two. No way. No way. We're oh my god! The monster. A swinging monster. Oh my god! This is going crazy! This is This is unbelievable. And Quad Channing, this is awesome and damn right it is! One, two... Oh my god! Oh my god! That bitch got right back. Oh! Seamus sent off the apron now. All hell of a monster scorn. Oh my god. I think that pissed off a bit more than anything. Oh my god. And now here comes The Undertaker. The Phenom back in the ring. And the ball is throwing everything they possibly can at the brothers, but... Just as I thought. It barely seems like... Oh, Seamus! Oh! The bar are doing whatever it takes to beat the brothers oh. in destruction, but I don't know, sir, if it's going to be enough. Oh! Oh! Come on. The bar may be crafty. Uppercut. Oh, my God! The bar may be crafty, but I think you'd agree. When it comes to durability, you'd be hard-pressed to beat these two. Oh, man. Seamus made a mistake trying to get in the ring with the dead man. And Cesaro missing that uppercut wildly. Just uh, he's desperately. almost desperate there. Uh-oh. Uh -oh, like a running freight oh! train. Oh. It's oh, no good trade by the Undertaker. Like a runaway freight train, the speed and quickness of Undertaker is still there after all these years. It's almost shocking. Oh, wait, wait. Cesaro. Oh. Uh oh. Let's go up for something big. Cesaro. Oh, ho -ho! Big Undertaker. He's the calling for it. Line, and now the Undertaker. Go for Chokeslam. Chokeslam. Up and Got him! Slams him down with the choke slam and the strips. The strips are down. I think the big, I think the final bell might be ready to toll. Oh, oh, oh my god! Oh my god! Oh god this, what the hell? Where did oh, they god. come from? Oh my god. He came out of the crowd. Happening? Where's Abyss? I think Abyss is busy with the, the ball on the outside. What the hell is happening? Roman Reigns and the Undertaker brawling. The match has been thrown off. Oh, this is. Oh, no. Roman! Undertaker and Abyss just got done fighting a war with the bar, and now the Shield picked their spot. Oh my god! Now look at Abyss! The bar! This is it? Oh my god! And Abyss! Abyss, Abyss fighting like anything he can. The bar. Abyss may be a monster, but it's still two on one. God! The bar retired. Oh, but Abyss is not down. Abyss is not down, but it doesn't matter. The bar beating down Abyss. The bar retained their tag team championships by disqualification. Oh my God! Look at this. 
This is a mugging. I don't care how big, how big, how powerful, how much impervious the pain you are. You can't take from two on one beat down like this, especially after That's a grueling match like this. Oh, 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 oh my God! They're trying to dissect the monster. Someone needs to get down here. Oh. This is this is too much. Enough is enough. Jesus! I love that! I'm the only two that get the same fate! It's like, I, you think CM Punk's behind this? I, I don't know! It didn't seem, it didn't seem like it, but I have to admit the timing of this is very, very odd. Kane was attacked, and now the field are going after Undertaker, and then the bar has something to do oh with Taker. I don't know if the bar knew this was going to happen. They just seemed to take advantage of the opportunity. Well, CM Punk actually had some type of alliance oh with the bar God. on the SmackDown before Rebellion. This could have been the whole plan all along, or maybe the bar is just taking advantage of a convenient situation. Well, you know what they say about a gift horse. The bar is just having to escape with their tag team titles. And... Oh, 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 oh Double DDT! Tiger fighting back! Undertaker's had enough. He is living. Tiger's fighting back! Almost desperately! How was that pure instinct? And he's gonna go for that same combination of Roman Reigns from Roman Reigns with the knee to the nose and a strike back to the head. Damn it! And Roman oh, Reigns with a big boot. This is a terrible way to end what was otherwise a fantastic main event. Oh no! Oh no! No, no! Enough is enough. Superman punch and Rollins climbing the top. No, there's no way he's gonna hit anything from there. Oh, Roman Reigns! The Undertaker in a position for Superman Frog Splash combination. Oh my God! Come on! Come on! Where's security? Where's someone else from the locker room? We need help out here. Hey, right, Biggie! Oh, Big E's seen enough. Big E! I look at a bit! You know this is the Help has finally arrived! You know the beef between the bar and the New Day? <coughs> and Big E's oh. laying. Abyss is back to his feet. Oh no. Oh, Abyss is back! Fighting Cesaro! Oh, right in the right in the logo. And he did it again. And Big E seems oh. to be helping a miss. Oh, his arm his head got taken off there. Oh, Stop. has the damage been done? And oh, double needed to my Big E. On the stage! Who's gonna put a stop to this? I don't know, but we need to get a handle on it somehow. This is getting way out of hand. Oh! The fight is going on! The 305 pounder Big E taking it to Cesaro. And... Wait, in the ring! Oh, perfect! Thank you! The rest of the new day. They're driving off the shield. Oh, wait, Xavier. Big this is completely broken down! This is completely broken down! 
we said this SmackDown was turning into a power keg. This isn't exactly how I expected it, but... Well, this is what CM Punk brought across the WDF rock, locker room. Oh, my God! Total anarchy, no rules, no regard for anything. What the fuck was happening? And if CM Punk was worried about his job before, he's got to be really sweating it now. What the hell is happening? The new day in the shield! Brawling in the ring! Big E fighting with the bar alongside of Piss and the Undertaker! I don't know where the hell he went! I don't know where the hell the Undertaker went, but Rollins, oh, Xavier. No love lost between New Day and the Shield either. The New Day actually defeated the Shield in a six-man tag team match not too long ago. Oh, and Rollins is going to stop and get the corner. And all right, oh, close on. And now, they were facing Roman Reigns. This is complete anarchy. This whole thing has completely broken down. Oh! No blow by Xavier! A low blow by Xavier Woods! Oh, look at this! Out of Out of Spot to be in if you're Dean Ambrose, beat down or not. The yes. Undertaker is going to make him the pay. Crowd. We're amongst the WWF Fan Nation. Oh, God. Connor, they're fighting all over the place. I don't know which way to turn. There's a, there's a brawl all sides of the arena. There's oh. a fight going on on all sides of the arena. What is Undertaker doing? Oh my god! Oh! oh. His body the break. A slam on that on that Oh my god, he's beating! I just the face on that! Easy to look in the dead and end. Is on our backstage! They're backstage! This is called pandemonium! What the hell is happening? <laughs> Someone needs to separate these superstars or we're not going to have much of a SmackDown roster left. We're going up for like several minutes now. And wait, wait, wait. Oh, are, 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 I'm getting something in my, uh, in my side. We're, we're running out of time. We're starting to run out of time. We, we better hurry this up before. We, oh, no, oh, so there, oh, I thought Biggie was going to smash it through the table there. Oh, no. Cesaro's got a chair. Oh, oh. Yeah, we're, we're running out of time! We're running out of time! Someone's gonna put a stop to this. Oh, there's pandemonium on SmackDown. Oh, we're gonna have to call it here, Frank. Guys, we're gonna have to call it. We're gonna have to call it. Well, ladies and gentlemen, thank you for watching the show. I, my God! Well, we're gonna have to leave this fight in progress, ladies and gentlemen. On behalf of Frank and Brandon, I'm Connor Winnie. Uh, until next time.